Honey Dew. Textbook in English for Class 8. Page 53. Notes for the Teacher. Units 4 to 7. Bapin Chaudhary's Lapse of Memory. A Satyajit Ray story with a surprise ending that brings in its wake the much-needed psychological relief to the sophisticated executive beleaguered by a conspiracy, which is a humorous take after all. Before asking children to read the text, tell the story part by part, each part ending where the listener wonders what comes next. Activity 3 under Working with Language is about two tense forms, simple past and present perfect. Notice how both have been used in conjunction with each other. The following explanatory notes may be useful. The present perfect tense is used to refer to an action initiated and completed in the past and is associated with the present. It has its effect on the present situation. I have seen the Taj. I know what it looks like. He has arrived. He is here. I have finished my work. I am free now. Present perfect tense is usual with already, so far, not yet, ever, never, etc. It is not used with ago, yesterday, last week, month, year, etc. The last bargain. Here is a method of teaching that may be tried. A. Let children read the first stanza silently. Ask the following questions. 1. How many persons or characters are there? 2. Who are they? 3. Who is big and who is small? 4. What does the person in the first line say? 5. What does the other one in the fourth line say? 6. Do they stay together or part company? Why? Page 54 B. Now reconstruct the episode. Begin like this. I was walking on the road looking for work. I saw the king in his chariot. He had a sword in his hand. He was very kind to me. He shook my hand and offered to hire me. I did not accept his offer. To me, power is not a valuable thing. It is not permanent. It won't make me happy. I was looking for something else as a reward for my work. What is he looking for? Let us read the next stanza. C. Do the other stanzas in the same way. The clue to what the person is looking for lies in the last line. The operative phrases are the child's play and a free man. The child and her or his play is a metaphor for innocence and inward happiness, which gives this person a sense of fulfillment and freedom from stress and strife. He feels genuinely free and happy in the company of the child. Recite each stanza with feeling, pausing at the right places. The method suggested may work better for a poem with a story. The Summit Within Adventure and the World of Nature The arduous task of reaching the highest summit in the world makes the climber reflect on the internal summits, which are perhaps higher than the Everest. The text underscores the physical, emotional and spiritual aspects of the adventure in a single perspective. Divide the text into three parts. A convenient division is suggested here. Dash, that mountains are a means of communion with God. End of part one. It is emotional. It is spiritual. End of part two. The remaining is 
Part 3 Design while reading comprehension questions for each part. The multiple choice items are given at the end of the lesson. You may try the following as additional questions. What is the author's personal answer to the question as to why people climb mountains? How is the same question answered in part 2 in a different way? Page 55 Famous climbers have recorded how they needed just that help. Explain the italicized phrase. Looking round from the summit, you tell yourself that dash. A. Complete this sentence using the same words as in the text without referring to the book. B. Now complete it using a clause or phrase of your own without changing meaning. Activities 2 and 3 under Working with Language provide ample opportunities for vocabulary development. Extend activity 2 by choosing new words from the text to cover their adjective and or adverb forms. Remark, remarkable, remarkably. Type, typical, typically. Use each item in a meaningful context involving more than one sentence. What you say is not appropriate, though it's a good remark. Isn't that remarkable? It may be so, but it doesn't mean you are remarkably objective. You may not find the dialogue above remarkable enough, but it meets the immediate requirement appropriately. Reread and discuss passages where the author's admiration for the mountains and passion for adventure comes through. The Schoolboy A school is a place where children and teachers assemble every morning to learn from one another. Find out if any child would like to describe school in a different way. An interesting discussion on different types of schools, supported by pictures from magazines or newspapers, may ensue. A village school where children are sitting on the floor. Another school where they are sitting at long desks. An outdoor lesson under a tree, etc. Ask children how they reach school. Do they walk or take a bus, etc. What problems others in remote areas may face in reaching school on time? Any suggestions as to how to make school an interesting and enjoyable place? Page 56 This is Jody's Fawn A story about a child's emotional preoccupation with the fawn whose mother had to be killed to save his father's life. The story highlights values such as compassion and justice, care and concern for human and animal life. Spend some time on a discussion about home remedies for commonplace health problems or ailments. Should we see a doctor about every little thing or should we talk to the grandmother first? The growing concern about preservation of environment and protection of animal life has gone a long way in persuading schools to refrain from dissecting animals for experiment. Elicit children's comments on the issue and on the law that punishes humans for hurting animals. Activity 1 under Working with Language is about reporting questions, yes, no and WH questions. The use of if, whether in the case of yes, no type questions should be explicitly explained. Devise separate exercises for teaching the use of if, whether, the appropriate reporting verb, the changes in pronominals in the reported speech and the sequence of tenses. Here is a simple exercise to exemplify some of these points. Choose the correct word to complete statements in indirect speech given below. Write words in the blanks given. A. 
where do you come from? I dash in brackets said asked him where dash in brackets he you come from b what is your name he asked me what dash in brackets my his name in brackets is was c are you happy i asked him dash in brackets if whether he dash is was happy d do you live here he asked me dash in brackets whether if i dash in brackets live lived dash in brackets here there e why are you crying the teacher asked the child dash in brackets if why she dash in brackets is was were crying page 57 here is another exercise read the following dialogue between jody and his father rewrite their conversation in indirect speech benny lay quiet staring at the ceiling boy you've got me hemmed in it won't take much to raise the fawn it will soon start eating leaves you are smarter than boys of your age we took its mother and it wasn't to blame it seems ungrateful to leave it to starve begin like this penny lay quiet staring at the ceiling he said to jody that dash jody replied that it wouldn't dash activity 2 under working with language deals with transitive and intransitive verbs ask children to underline the direct object in the following sentences he brought me a colorful umbrella i will write a letter to him you should give yourself a chance activity 3 under writing may be linked with the first task covering home remedies under before you read it will be useful to take it up separately also the duck and the kangaroo try the method suggested for the last bargain before taking up the text and the activities given let children talk about unusual activities they want to do such as walking on the moon floating in outer space or shaking hands with an octopus take every idea seriously no matter how improbable it may seem we may come upon with enough raw material of which the duck and the kangaroo is made it may be suggested that a story or poem like the present one need not be factually correct or real we enjoy reading them because they appeal to our imagination curiosity and sense of the music of words page 58 children should be encouraged to attempt short poems such as the following one once i knew a kangaroo named sue how about you two there is a man called peter pan i know another who's neither pan nor peter you haven't met him have you it's my friend kangaroo sample two is impromptu as you rightly guessed did you a visit to cambridge excerpt from a travelogue highlighting exchange of views between two extraordinary persons on what it means to be differently abled a tour through cambridge had a surprise both pleasant and poignant for the author he met the brilliant and completely paralyzed author of A Brief History of Time and talked to him for a full half hour. 
Activity 2 under Working with Language is about the present participle. Dancing, walking, used as adjective. Running on the road, he saw dash, participle. The train is running, dash, verb. The running train, dash, adjective. The use of past participle as adjective may also be illustrated here. He has broken the window, verb. The window was broken when the Almira was taken out, verb, in passive. See the broken window, adjective. Activity 3 under speaking and writing may be done as a project. Lot of oral work to precede the writing task. The final draft should be edited and improved before it is put up on the board. Page 59. Activities 1 and 2 under speaking and writing are about word stress. Stressed syllables to be pronounced clearly and loudly. Some words of more than one syllable from the text may also be listed according to whether the stress falls on the first or the second syllable. When I set out for Lyanus. The poem has a clear beginning, middle, end structure. The beginning is setting out, the middle is sojourn and the end is return. Draw children's attention to appropriate words, phrases, lines that suggest and reinforce each phase of the journey. Lyanus to be pronounced as li an Ness. The last syllable receives the primary stress. If feasible and useful, explain the rhyme scheme and its musical effect on the listener. Stanza 1. A, B, B, A, A, B. Stanza 2. A, C, C, A, A, C. Stanza 3. A, D, D, A, A, D. Lyanus A, away B, there C, eyes D. Honey Dew, you were just listening to this audiobook. Production assistants Minakshi Kugreti and Tanu Gupta. Recorded by Batilang Lingdo. Technical assistants Vikas Sangwan and Soumya Malik. Produced by Ajit Horo and presented to you by CIET and CERT, New Delhi, India.